Hello there, you once more welcome to the Glory Realm Devotion Moment. This is the glory, the glory, I mean, this is the moment the glory of God comes upon your life, turns it around, and something beautiful happens to you. It's a wonderful, glorious day. Let the presence of the Lord, feel the word of God, invade your life and cause something glorious to happen to you. We have been reading from the book of John chapter number 9. And today we want to continue from where we stop. You know, Jesus has healed this man who was born blind and he sent him to the pool called Siloam. The man watched and he came back seeing. You know, before he watched, Jesus took mud, added his saliva to it, smeared it on the man's eyes and told him to go to the pool called Siloam, which means sin and which is symbolic of the river of God, the glory of God, what was revealed in Psalm 23 verse 2 and 3. You know, the, the gentle, still, restful water that refreshes the soul. The man went and came back seeing. The scripture says he went and came back seeing. And when he came back seeing, people were confused. Some said, is the man? Some, some, some other said, no, he's not the one. And he said, I am. <laughs> you know, it's amazing when God decides to visit you, it is without doubt. And it will be too ungrateful of us not to let people know what the Lord has done. When the Lord turns the situation around, don't just stand there idly doing nothing. Let people know He's done something for you. So when the people got to know about that, they took him to the Pharisees. And the Pharisees now got indignant simply because they found out that the man was healed on a Sabbath day. And Jesus took pleasure healing people on the Sabbath. He wasn't moved by what the, the religious tradition of folks would say. Some, some people have turned in moments of worship to some routine, dry, powerless, you know, empty religious routine. But Jesus wants people to come to him. He wants people to encounter his presence. He wants people to encounter the glory that flows from him. And that's what we should have as the children of the Most High God. And if you go on to verse number 16, now, you know, the scripture says, Then some of the Pharisees said, This man, Jesus, is not from God, because he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner, a bad man, do such signs and miracles? So there was a difference of opinion among, the, among them. So when Jesus stepped in and made the difference in that man's life, people who were united in dead tradition and religion suddenly got divided because the light invaded darkness and separated you know people who were receptive to the light suddenly began to see better and those who want to continue in their tradition and dead religion remain adamant and wouldn't take what the lord has in store for them the next verse verse number 17 tells us accordingly they said to the blind man again what do you say about him seeing that he opened your eyes and he said he is he must be a prophet so the man said he must be a prophet he's talking about jesus they wanted to hear his opinion of the one who opened his eyes and he said he must be a prophet in verse number 18 however the jews did not believe that he had really been blind and i wonder how could they miss him the man has been there all along they didn't really believe that he's been blind and that he had received his sight until they called, that he summoned the parents of the man. So they called for his parents. And this is amazing. It got more interesting. Verse number 19 reveals that they asked them, Is this your son whom you reported as having been born blind? How then does he see now? You see, they couldn't even handle it. They couldn't even figure out what was happening. Is, that, is this your son that was born blind? How then is he seeing now? Now, the parents were clever. Is their response in verse 20 is amazing. Look at what they said. His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But look at the next thing they said. He said, Yes, we know he's our son and he was born blind. But as to how he can now see, we do not know. Or who has opened his eyes? We do not know. Obviously, they are trying to be smart there. 
he is of age. Ask him, let him speak for himself and give his own account of it. See, the parents don't want to be involved in the controversy and in the, the fight that was between the Jews and Jesus. Now, to me also, uh, they, they, they love the tradition much more than they love what has happened to their son. And there are parents like that. The glory of God, the presence of God is visiting their children, visiting their home. But for fear of being, uh, of offending certain persons in certain positions, uh, men of authority, you know, they would not give the glory to God. They just want to try to kind of explain it away. The parents took back the responsibility to their son. Said, ask him is of age. In verse number 22 said, his parents said this. His parents said this because they feared the leaders of the Jews. Fear is the reason why they said so. For the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should acknowledge Jesus to be the Christ, he should be expelled and excluded from the synagogue now a lot of persons have decided to walk by fear instead of by faith some people love the tradition and the religion much more than they love the manifestation of the person of Jesus they would rather you know die for a tradition a dead tra they want to die for a dead tradition and lifeless religion and they fail to get contact with the fountain of life and they miss it all they miss it verse number 23 goes on to tell us and this is what he says on that account his parents said he is of age ask him and it's amazing do you have reasons to avoid the reality of what jesus is doing around you as uh, some folks have said there are no miracles that miracles stopped in the days of the apostles so when they see a miracle they want to explain it away to some you know things that happen as a result of you know uh, certain circumstances you know the thing was on research on re research on or remission i don't know whatever they call it but you know what Nobody can take the glory away from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He's King of kings and he's Lord of lords. If you want to see the glory of God made manifest in your life, you must learn to let him have his way. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. If you have fear, you have a different spirit, and it's because you don't have the spirit of God. The spirit of God caused us to be bold. He's not giving us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. Love for God, love for our fellow human beings. Power, power, power and sound mind. If you want to have that, all you need to do is give your life to Jesus. Make him the Lord and Savior of your life. He's going to invade your life, and your life will never be the same again. Thank you for being part of today's broadcast. I hope that you find some time to pray and ask Jesus to come into your life. I hope that you start living the Christian life and have the victory that the Lord destined you to have. Till I come your way again tomorrow, by the grace of God, I'm Ego Louis Yegwe Baru. God bless you.